talent is everywhere, but opportunity is limited by your post scope. All they need is an opportunity and they can achieve poten- their potential. People have dreams. We don't want them to forego those dreams. So we've had dancers, artists, engineers, nurses, doctors, surgeons, and now we give over, out over 850 scholarships every year. So, every year, 850? Yes. So he, he says, you know, it's been life-changing for me. I'm, I'm able to be, you know, a doctor um, when I never thought that that was possible. It's very simple, really. Um, we empower young people to achieve their potentials. G'day. I'm Zach Lewis. And this is the Good People Podcast. It's a tip of the cap, it's a pat on the back, it's a smile from ear to ear. They're the good people from around here. Welcome to another episode of the Good People Podcast. My name is Andy and it's brought to you by in other good news. Uh, Today, I've got a guest on the show who is, he's a man about town. He has some good stories to tell. He's the CEO of Western Chances, which is a fantastic organization. And we're going to hear all about that, but we're also going to hear about the man uh, behind the role. Uh, Welcome to the show, Zach Lewis. Thanks, Andy. It's great to be here. Looking forward to chatting. Yes. Um, Now, Western Chances... Uh, obviously based in the west of Melbourne. Um, you have um, been a man of the west of Melbourne as well. Although I think you've jetted off down to the coast these days. I have made it, don't tell anyone, I have made a slight shift out of western Melbourne down the coast to be around family uh, past Geelong, but still very much love working in the community of the west. Yeah, it is a, it, it's an excellent community. I really love um, the people and the, the all of the uh, activities and uh, organisations that operate in the west. Uh, like the one that you're running, so Western Chances. So, um, But first, what I want to do is I want to give people a bit of a background on who you are, um, just so they can sort of understand um, how you get to be in the role that you're in and why it's so important. So um, so I guess firstly, um, Zach Lewis, you are – originally you went and studied environmental science. science. I did, yeah. I did environmental science at university. I think I was always just loved the outdoors. I think when I was a young kid, there was there was two things that I loved, science and being outdoors. Yeah. Um, and so really just wanted to combine the two because I, you know, when you're young, you, you're starting to think about what you want to do with your life. And I could never really envision myself in an office. Yep. Um, I always wanted to be working outside. Um, but I think from very early on, I, I really had this... Um, desire i guess to to have my work count for something um so i was always drawn to sort of work that would be contributing um to something you know uh you know greater um so it's a purpose I, purpose driven yeah i think so purpose driven yeah. um at the time i didn't quite know what my purpose was but i, I sort of <laughs> knew that i needed some purpose in my work yeah um and the environmental uh, science just seemed like a really great fit yeah right so you were saying you told me that um you actually with your family, you used to go camping and you used to, you know, get out in the outdoors and that was probably part of it as well, right? Like, Yeah, yeah. We used to, you know, as a young kid, I used to do a lot of camping with my parents. They actually took me out of school, me and my sister, when I was in grade two and we, you know, we travelled around Northern Australia camping for sort of a term, oh, uh, right. which, you know, even I was young, I was like grade two or three, but still got these, you know, really strong emotions from that. Um, so, yeah, just always was really kind of, I thought, God, if you can combine something you love doing with your work, you know, yeah. really set yourself up. So that was my thinking at the time, you know, yeah. love the environment and wanted to, you know, try and be part of a, a movement to sort of uh, make sure that, you know, there's sustainability in what we do. Yeah, right. And it, um, I'm, th- I'm just sort of wondering now, could it have ever ended up you um, working with someone like the Sea Shepherd or someone like, yeah, you know, I could see with what you're doing that maybe you could have gone that way as well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but I was, I was always very, really science driven. So I think, um, I think, you know, environmental science, I got to be outside, I got to be working in, you know, great environments and, but also in something I found really, you know, I guess, into intellectually stimulating, I, I guess at the time. So, yeah. So then you went like, so you did your, um, environmental science degree mm-hmm. and then you went on and did a master's. I did, yeah, a Master's of um, Public Policy. So I was working for government at the time. I worked in um, research actually around, um, you know, fishery stock assessment. So I worked in making sure our Victorian fisheries were sustainable and um, wanted to know a lot more about the public policy process and um, how government uh, can shape uh, society. Um, yeah. So I sort of took on a Master's of Public Policy and 
ironically moved out of government before I finished that degree, but man, I just learned so much. Yeah. Um, really changed my thinking. You know, I'd come from a, you know, science can be really rigid and I think I can be a really rigid thinker sometimes. So doing this um, Masters of Public Policy, you know, an arts degree was fantastic. Uh, I can't yeah. can't say enough how much I got out of that. So Yeah, right. What sort of things do you think you get out of out of that? Really changed my perspective on things, really opened my eyes to, you know, different challenges, the way to approach different challenges. And I think I actually think started to shift my interests and I've always been someone who has felt that where you sort of align your purpose and your interests and your skills, that's where the magic happens. And I think that really started to shift my interests from um from, you know, purely environmental issues to to broader um you know social issues i think yeah okay um and so you've done your, your masters and you're talking about like in jobs you've worked in the department of um economic development mm -hmm. jobs transport and resources so i mean is that also the similar period that's right yeah yes yeah. so i was working um in uh, fisheries management at the time for that department and yeah um, and that work involved, you know, sort of traveling along the coast, managing some of our Victoria's resources sustainably. But the part that I really liked was working with communities um, to shape that policy and management of those local fisheries resources. So, you know, I used to go out to Mallacoota a lot and work with abalone um, fishermen out way out there in the east. Yep. Um, it was fascinating because they were driven by passion, you know. A lot of those yeah. fishermen had been, um, those licences had been in the family for generations and had this really great ownership of those resources and wanting to do the right thing, um, which was which I loved kind of working with them on. Yeah, they do. Um, people do, like, because that's the thing with policy. It's, it's always two ways, isn't it? Like, it's always got an impact on both the sort of the looking at it as from a broader thing, but then you've got average person who's living off that, that as something that the family's been living off for a long time mm. and that policy can really change what they can do. Actually, there was, um, I guess, some of the more news-driven ones are around the Indigenous people and the, the uh, what do they call it, like the diving for stuff off the coast um, and them having policy issues, I guess. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's a really, really complex um, uh, field to work in because yeah. there's so many competing, I guess, competing interests and competing goals um, that, you know, um, public policy managers are trying to juggle. Um, so I did enjoy that complexity and I did enjoy working in the community, but it's not an area without conflict um, for sure. And I think there's really different views and people are so passionate in their views as well, yes. um, which I, at times could be challenging. But um, that work was fantastic and I started to kind of realise, love the environment. I've always had a real connection with the environment my partner calls me a nature boy you know it really lights me up when we're outside um but uh you know really enjoyed I, I was enjoying more the work with the community on those environmental issues and i started to really you know map out in my own mind that i wanted to move in a more um community focused direction in my career i, I felt like that was starting to emerge as my own sort of um personal purpose that's the way you were heading yeah yeah that's good now you also had a role australian wildlife conservancy did i get that right you nailed it. That's a tough word, conservancy. <laughs> Not one I use on my uh, daily daily basis. Tell me about that, like, because that's heading. I guess this is in this transition period as well towards community. But what was it, what was that role all about? Yeah, so that was a really big change for me, um, uh, moving from the government sector into the not for profit sector for the first time. And yep. um, I knew that I wanted to move out of government and move into the charity sector and felt that the way to do that was to move um, in the field I was in, in, in the environmental sort of management. So yep. um, AWC, a brilliant organisation, national organisation that, you know, manages private land for conservation outcomes. Um, and I just learnt so much from moving across, was surrounded by great people. Yep. You know, they had this real investment in local partnerships, particularly, particularly with um, traditional um, landowners yep. um, up in the Kimberley and, and in um, New Haven up in Central Australia. And so started to see this model emerge where like the things are so intrinsically linked community and environmental outcomes absolutely and i guess you've seen a little bit of that on your camping trip up up north i guess yeah that's right so <laughs> you've already been exposed a little bit yeah yeah so i was there for three years in a, in a fundraising role which again it's that that type of work itself was a really big learning curve for me also but really lit a passion in me around i think the charity sector is a really intriguing sector because you can see a problem and then you can go and come up with the solution yeah. and start to work on um, being part of the solution, not the problem. And you get people around you, you get great people involved and amazing things happen. And I said, 
that was the first time I really saw what was possible in the charity sector, I think. Yeah, right. And you tend to get very passionate people as well, I find. You do. Yes, absolutely you do. So, yeah. um, And that, on one hand, that's, you know, a lot of these things wouldn't happen without passion. Yeah. Um, so it's a great thing. But sometimes it can be challenging, right? Because there's so many emotions involved um, with that and identity wrapped up in that. Yeah, that's right. And people coming from all different places and expectations and all sorts of stuff it can be it can be also quite a challenge yeah yeah but i think that's the fun part of working yeah. you know working in this sector is you meet amazing people and they're yep. they're, they're really interesting and they're really purpose-driven yeah and they'll go to great lengths to make things happen as well 100 percent. when you see a lot of these community groups that are taking action on certain issues environmental or social they tend to be able to have find the energy to go to great lengths to make change yeah yeah and i think i learned at awc that you you know you're always always more powerful as a collective where you get pe- where you bring people in and you're inclusive and you try and you try and um, include as many people as possible you're going to have better outcomes and uh, it was a sort of really important lesson for me around god you know you can go you know what's the old saying if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go further get people together and go together and it really um awc really sort of highlighted that to me oh that's fantastic and then of course you ended up um working for our friends down at food bank i did yeah i had a fantastic time at food bank i was there nearly four years i think and looking at the dates um you were there during a pretty interesting part especially towards the end yes yep that was around the bushfires. Yes, so I worked at Food Bank in a programs role, so um, I managed their community programs. And uh, uh, during my time, the the Victorian bushfires happened, and um, I remember that it was, you know, it was obviously very. It happened over the the Christmas break around New Year's, and um, you know, there's not a lot of people on hand, and it all kicked off very quickly. And I like, I don't think I've ever seen an organisation mobilise so quickly, sort of led led by Dave as as I sort of saw at that time, and. Um, it was pretty amazing to be a part of, to be honest. Um, I felt like we were just this channel channel for the goodwill of Melburnians um, to the people that were affected by those bushfires. Yeah, it really was, It really brought people out of the woodwork, didn't it? It um, did. And the amount of – what I loved, and actually in the interview with Dave McNamara recently, um, he was talking about um, one of the biggest things was that being able to get the food down there was the issue. So that was why a drop-off point made sense, mm. why people could come and drop because you had the – infrastructure and the ability to use the roads to get down there and drop off the food so that would have been a very both interesting time was it stressful it was stressful but i think um it was one of those times where you yes it was a um there was a lot to do Mm. but you just felt so invigorated because you actually got the opportunity to do that Um, i think we just felt really lucky to be involved and be able to help um and you know when we had cars lined up i think you probably remember it all through yarraville and footscray trying to get in to drop food like how can you not be um like energized by that by so many people choosing to help other people in their community oh i agree and it's probably when we started to really take notice of food bank um because just because of that extra i don't know it it went big i guess it did it went big it did so that was great like um great place to work from all things i've heard and great you know they're doing great things down there but you've moved on to another role which is it's leveling up You've moved into a CEO role, and yes. um, and that role is with Western Chances. Um, and what I'd love to do, because if you don't know anything about Western Chances, you need to. Um, Western Chances, which I'll let you explain, but is a, operates in the the inner west of Melbourne, um, giving opportunities to young people. But maybe if you can give us a description of what Western Chances does, and then we'll dig into some of the impacts that yeah. it's having. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I think. It's very simple, really. Um, we empower young people to achieve their potential. So um, my founding chair, Terry Brax, has a saying that I think really resonates with me. She says, talent is everywhere, but opportunity is limited by your postcode. Um, so we've got so many young people uh, in Melbourne's West who are talented, resilient, maybe experiencing some really um, uh, barriers in their life, uh, you know, financially or socially, but they've got so much talent and all they need is an opportunity and they can achieve their potential and that's where Western Chances comes in. We provide that opportunity and we do it by providing them scholarships to purchase their um, education essentials, things like laptops, um, home internet, textbooks, um, Mikey passes to get to and from school and we connect them to a range of opportunities to learn and grow Uh, and by doing that we see them complete their education and go on uh, to achieve their potential. So it's a fantastic organisation to be a part of and I think a really simple, straightforward, tangible model. And if you look at some of the things that these guys are doing, 
I mean, you've got people going on to be surgeons, doctors, teachers. Like, you've got some pretty serious vocations, I guess, coming out of these opportunities. We do, yeah. We like to say we're talent agnostic. So if the young person's got a talent in mind and they're showing motivation towards their studies, we'll back them. So we've had dancers, artists, engineers, nurses, doctors, surgeons. Um, so a whole range of different professions. But I think the the theme that sort of runs through it is that you know, these young people have dreams um, and we don't want them to forego those dreams. So we just want to support them on their way. Um, and you'd be surprised that I'm always shocked by such a small little intervention as a scholarship and the average value of our scholarships are about $1,000 a year. Yep. Um, you know, such a small little investment in that young per- person sees them flourish um, and they can go on to do, you know, to do great things. What do you, what do you reckon that um, is the, the main thing that, changes their world i mean the money is one thing but what what do you, why do you reckon you get such a big change it's a good question i think one of the things that i've noticed with some of our young people they tell me all the time is um having an organization believe in them um so you know they might have come from a you know challenging personal situation or a, a tough um tough background and to have an organization say hey we love what you're doing we think you can be really great and mm-hmm. we're going to support you um means the world to them in terms of their confidence and motivation and just their belief that they can go on um, and do what they want. Um, So actually, we recently uh, caught up with one of our young scholarship recipients and she was telling us about, you know, she's um, her mum's a single parent, um, you know, there's three daughters, all of whom are scholarship recipients of ours, They're you know, great, great people. And she was saying, oh, you know, very loving family, but we just didn't have a lot of resources when I was going through school. So unconsciously, she'd started to kind of go, God, I've always thought about doing, um, you know, paramedicine, but I just don't think, you know, that's on the cards for us, you know. And so she was sort of putting these limits on her dreams and she realised once Western Chances was supporting her, she sort of realised, hey, I don't need to do that. I can, if there's something I want to uh, go and do, I can I can dream big and I can, um, I can go and achieve that. So it just really, I think for me, it's really about empowering those young people. Um, the, the financial aid is, is important, obviously, but yeah. there's a huge empowerment piece to our program. Absolutely. It's a mindset change, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And some of these kids are coming from, I mean, there's varied, isn't it? It's varied backgrounds because you've got um, uh, refugees, you've got, um, or new Australians, and then you have um, people who are, come. they've come from situations. Actually, I read about one who, where the, the father had suddenly passed away. Mm. Um, and that's just a situation where they were found themselves financially in, a, in trouble. Um, which you can't see coming. Yes. So completely outside of their control. You yeah. know. Um, so, yeah, the the young people um, that are in our program, yeah, completely different um, background. So you're right. We have um, the West is hugely multicultural. So yeah. I think there's what is there nearly 150 languages spoken in across Melbourne's West. Yeah. Um, it's the most culturally diverse region in Australia. Um, so our scholarship recipients certainly represent that diversity, which is fantastic. So we do. A scholarship award ceremony each year where we kind of invite our community um, we hold a big event in it um, almost like a graduation ceremony for a for, for a university but on a smaller scale and we ask all our new scholarship recipients to come along and celebrate with their families and you just see the diversity in our community that'd be wild and you also see um, I think how when you um, when you support one young person how that change can ripple out from them into the community. So you're not just supporting them, you're supporting their family, their role models to their siblings. And then they, we, we hear it all the time, young people, they tell us, oh, I want to give back to the community that supported me. So it just ripples out into the community, which yeah. is so exciting to see. Yeah, I did. And you read on the, on the testimonials on your website, you read a lot of that. They're saying, now that I've had a chance, I really want to give someone else. I really want to, someone started a business um supporting what was it akr or something there was a someone who started a business who um to help welcome new australians and help them work their way around and mm-hmm. stuff like that so they they seem very grateful yes yeah like we we had um recently one young woman who um, we were supporting her she was actually doing engineering um i had a real she was a, a new migrant to australia really tough um family background i think just establishing a new life in a new country presents a whole raft of challenges she was really intelligent young girl and was studying engineering and halfway through her engineering degree, she decided to change to teaching because she was like, God, the teachers in my school, Williamstown High, who supported me so amazingly, I want to do that for other young people. Shifted her degree for engineering. We supported her through high school and through her tertiary study. 
she then finished um, her teaching degree and got a um, teaching role back in the school that she um, came from and wants to now nominate students for scholarships for Western Chances, you know, to really provide those opportunities that have been given to her back to other, you know, young kids in the community. That's unreal. Yeah. And that's your ripple effect. It is, yeah. Show a bit of kindness to someone and they can go out and and share that. Do you have a um, Melbourne Uni? You have some sort of a um, relationship with Melbourne Uni. I see um, some colleges and things that we do. Yes, so um, so we support. I'll just say we support our um, young people year on year. So we've got a unique model where once we bring them into our orbit, we'll continue providing them a scholarship each year through their studies while they continue to study. So we have a lot of young kids who they might we might start supporting them in year ten and they go through their VCE studies and then they go to university. We'll keep supporting them. Yep. And over the journey, we've started creating these connections with universities around, well, we've got this great talented cohort, you know, how can we start to open up opportunities for them? And we have some great connections at the University of Melbourne, and one of them is Trinity College. So Trinity College is a residential college um, at Uni- University of Melbourne. Their dining hall looks like Hod- Hogwarts. Yeah. If, yeah. <laughs> if you ever go in there, I couldn't believe it the first time I walked in. Yeah. Real classic old um, uni college. Yeah. 100%. Um, yeah. But they also offer a range, you know, for the residents in their college. They have, you know, tuition classes, counselling, um, f- f- food offerings. Um, so we collaborate with them. So they've got a scholarship program um, that enables, you know, young people to to live for free in their residential college. And um, and we actually collaborate with them to identify scholarships, um, those residential scholarships for our young people. So Western Chances young people can go and live at Trinity College while they're completing their studies at the University of Melbourne. Um, been a fantastic collaboration. You know, some of the some of the young people that go there are just in culture shock. You know, they just yeah. can't believe that 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 they're able to live there and um and provide you know and get access to those those um those services. That must be amazing. It is. Yeah, we've got one young lady there at the moment who is um who had a really challenging um, home life and and needed um needed some support. And we actually you know spoke with Trinity and she's a brilliant young lady. So she's now living. At Trinity, fifty-two weeks a year, um, so that she's you know she doesn't need to worry about her housing, you know. So we've created a, a safe housing environment for her, so she can just focus on her studies. Yeah. Um, which, it's collaborations like that that are life changing for young people. Oh, absolutely is because if you're not worried about um, a roof over your <laughs> over your head, that's I mean that's some these are the fundamentals and what a lot of these I mean thinking even back to you with your food bank days like we're talking about. If if you're stressed all day about worrying, where do you find the money to live or to keep a roof over your head? You can't. Where do you find the energy to focus on forward oh. planning and and improving your situation? Absolutely. Like we've got a young fella actually who, really smart young guy, ultra smart young guy who's studying to be a doctor at the yep. moment, and um, he he was living down in Lara near Geelong, and he was getting a train up every day to go to his studies, which. Um, the medical degree, their hours are quite extensive and really struggling with that component of it. So um, we collaborated with Trinity and he became a Trinity resident, um, which completely changed his outlook on his studies, whether he thought he could actually complete um, the medical degree. And he's now a, you know, a resident um, advisor, an RA at Trinity College, supporting the younger people who are first on campus. So it's just been, and, and he says to us, he says, look, it's been life changing being involved with Western Chances. You know, I think what we're great at doing is we're always opening doors for these young people. Yeah. You know, we always say, "Hey, we'll open a door. It's up to you if you want to walk through it." Um, and he he says, "You know, it's been life changing for me. I'm able to kind of, I'm able to be, you know, a doctor um, when I never thought that that was possible for me." Yeah, because that is a lot of areas of disadvantage. It wouldn't be. Mm. It wouldn't be possible, would it? Um, actually, I went to one of your events. I went to a fundraiser um, some time ago down at Grays, Graysland. Um, big fundraiser down there, and that was fantastic. But what I really enjoyed about that was when you actually had one of your uh, scholarship recipients was actually a um, was the MC, and they spoke so well. But they didn't. They sort of came across that later. Like they looked like an MC. They presented well. They got up there and they did the thing. In front of a big crowd, mm. and um, and then they said, "I'm a I'm a recipient of the of the Western Chances stuff." And yeah, so that's Julia Trung, our ambassador, um, an absolute powerhouse. So she's an amazing young person, um, and I think uh, she's got a really interesting story, actually. So um, Julia grew up here in Footscray, um, 
you know, she often talks about her parents working so hard um, in sort of manual labour jobs um, and, you know, um, she, but still resources were really tied in their family um, and we supported her with scholarships from um, an early age. And then she, once she finished school, she really wanted to get into production design and event management. And she's pretty bull at a gate, Julia. She's, you know, got when she's got firm IDs, she's happy to go at them. Um, and our chair at the time, Terry, sort of suggested, well, why don't we connect you with a mentor who's been in that, um, in that profession, and you know, can give you a bit of advice. And and we did that. And um, anyway, she, she's built her own business, um, JT Production Management. They now, I mean, it's going staggeringly, staggeringly well, despite um, you know the impacts of COVID. Yeah. And they now deliver all our events pro bono. They're our pro bono partner. So we've got this young person who we supported with a scholarship. She's she's done an amazing job growing this business, and she now is giving back to us. So that rather than us, you know, spending funds, you know, putting these events on, we're putting our money into scholarships, um, supporting other young people. So yeah amazing amazing young person she she was incredible she was um really inspiring um sitting there listening to her speak and talk about her experiences and what opportunities she's been given um i walked away from that event feeling really good um and also i got to sit next to one of the um i think they did go to trinity um and just just so full of life and and positivity which Mm. was which is what I really loved. And it was real eye-opener for me. It was one of the first introductions I've had to Western Chances. And I just thought this is such a great organisation. So I guess congratulations on that because that's amazing. How, how old is it now? How old is Western Chances? So we've been around nearly 20 years. So um, we we're founded by our, our current chair, so our founding chair, Terry Brax. And yep. So Terry, um, her background, you know, was she was a teacher. She yep. was a teacher here in Melbourne's West. And sure. Then, her partner, Steve, was Premier of the State. They, Premier Steve Brax, yeah. Yes, that's yep. right. They yep. travelled around the state a lot. And she she went up to Mildura and came across this program called Chances for Children. Right. And that program was really about, um, you know, uh, removing the tyranny of distance for regional students and providing them scholarships so that they could attend school and um, pay for those costs. And she and Terry just sort of had this light bulb moment kind of going, God, she's seen all these challenges in the school system in the West yep. about all these, you know, talented young kids who just – but for their personal circumstance could go on and do great things. And this light bulb moment just going, God, this Chances for Children model is a perfect fit for Melbourne's West. Um, so she sort of came back from that trip enthused and, and created Western Chances on the premise that um, let's just remove those barriers for these talented young people by providing them a scholarship. Um, so she formed Western Chances in 2003. And I think in that first year of scholarships in 2004, we gave out about 21 scholarships. And then, you know, um, and now we give over, out over 850 scholarships every year. So, every year, 850? Yes. So we're sort of grown, ex, you know, we've grown a, a lot over the, the journey. And I think um, I think what it's shown is that there's just such a huge need in the community. So, you know, you look at some statistics, but one in six young kids in Australia, um, you know, comes from poverty. That hugely affects their edu- educational outcomes. So they're already behind their peers from the get-go as soon as they enter school and the gap only widens and then you know that lack of education um, you know secondary and tertiary education has a lifelong impact so um, you know lower health outcomes and lower you know obviously economic outcomes over their life's journey so you've got this big need and and I think it, the reason why we start in Melbourne's West is because there's such pockets of sort of inter, uh, intergenerational um, you know disadvantage uh, that have been around the West in a, a long period of time. And, you know, there's still lower literacy and numeracy rates in the West than, you know, the rest of Melbourne, lower VCE completion rates. So so we kind of went, well, where where's the biggest need? And we that's why we've started here in the West. And I think our organisation is so reflective of the community spirit of the West. Like we were talking about it earlier, there really is this community yeah. spirit here. Yeah. Um, and I think we've sort of harnessed that in some ways around, hey, you know, with a, with a small sort of investment, we can have this huge impact for young people um, and people have really got behind that idea. Oh, 100%. And and it's not just words saying that it's community, like great community spirit as well. They're not just throwaway comments. It is, it's unless you've experienced it, it is something really, um, something to behold. Um, the West, I guess, was originally built by workers and migrants and stuff like that. So that's it's sort of a melting pot of a lot of different cultures and and, it, and it, the, these people, the, so the testimonials that really, for me, on your website that really ring, like that, that cut deep are the ones where they say, 
my either my parents worked really hard, but someone got sick, and so there's someone's a full time carer now, and so we just don't have the ability to earn much money and some opportunities, or the ones where like someone unfortunately just passed away, um, you know, with uh, suddenly. So these sort of ones where there's situations where they're working paycheck to paycheck effectively, mm-hmm. and that paycheck, if that dries up, all of a sudden, and right now in the current situation, interest rates, all the mm. bits, like that's going to be more and more people that need it as well. Mm. That's just opportunities shattered mm. without those funds, right? Yeah, the cost of living crisis is no doubt making things more challenging for families because school education expenses, they're expensive. You yeah. know? Textbooks are really expensive, all the stationery. Um, now, increasingly, digital access is a huge piece of our scholarship program because um, young people need laptops to access digital learning. It's um, all laptops. It's all laptop now. based, yeah, yeah. home internet. Um, you know, uh, particularly a lot of our young people come from large families. So how do they, where do they get, um, you know, quiet space to, um, to study? Um, they might have younger siblings that they have to care for in some respects. So it's really hard for them to contribute time to study. So yeah. um, it can be challenging. And, and I think, um, you know, I speak to a lot of people because uh, about the value of our scholarship at $1,000, which, you know, on the face of it perhaps doesn't seem that much, but... You know, I've, I remember reading in in one of um one of our scholarship applications about a young uh, girl who applied for scholarships a scholarship and and wanted help with stationery and you know she only had um, red pens you know her family couldn't afford to to purchase red pens and blue pens um which for, you know how much is a pen I don't know you can probably get a pen for less than a dollar so yeah, yeah. it just shows you I guess how tight some resources are in yes. families and then. You know, she was talking about the impact on her and she felt sort of like excluded um, from her classmates because, you know, um, it just put this barrier between her and her other classmates because she wasn't able to have those things. And, I, you know, it's always those little things that really, you know, tug at your heartstrings. I remember thinking, oh, my God, how hard would that be? And so often when I say it just removes these young people having to worry about that, they get all their school essentials, they yep. can participate fully in their education um, and they don't have to worry about where those where those essentials are coming from. Yeah, God, imagine not having the pens. It's big. Yeah, so it can it can be challenging. So that's why I think the scholarship is very very um, tangible, provides that you know um, financial assistance. But then we like to link our young people with opportunities, and that's where I feel like a lot of the magic happens. So yes. um, we link our young people to learning and growth opportunities, leadership camps, residential scholarships. Um, and they can they can pick and choose what suits their their development best. So they yep. sort of um, choose what opportunities we can um, provide. And we work with nearly twenty organisations to provide you know access to those opportunities for free for our young people. Yeah, I saw you've got a lot of um, partners. We do. I saw um, you've got listed on your website. Actually, you can jump on westernchances.org.au and you can check out all the different partners. But you've got yeah a lot of help from a lot of different partners. I think we're an organisation that really. Um, survives it, like our whole model is built on partnerships you know so we yep. work with schools to identify students and support students yes uh, we work with businesses and organizations to fund our program yep. uh, we work with um, universities and other organizations to provide links opportunities yep. um, for our young people so and i think that's the beauty of a model like ours and particularly in west it's really harnessing that community spirit because so many people want to get involved um, and and we do encourage that because i have to say not only is it really satisfying to be involved in this sort of work, it's fun. You know, you get to you get to um, you know bring people together to support your own community. I mean, it's it's so much fun, and um, the team and I often talk about um, sometimes because you get so invested in the work, it can be challenging to sort of draw that work life balance a little bit at times yeah. um, because you just want to throw yourself into it. Um, but someone I work with at Food Bank actually used to say, "If you're not all in on something, what's the point?" You know. Yeah. Um, so I think. Western Chances is all in on our young people and I yeah. think, you know, our team is all in on our purpose. Do you ever find it too hard? Like, do you ever sort of, does it ever get too much? No, not at all. No, not at all. So, yeah, love love working at Western Chances and I think it's always the people you work with, isn't it, um, that, yeah. you know, really bring things to life. Yep. Um, and also I think, you know, we, we do a number of events and, and things with our young people and it's just great to be able to talk with them, see how they're going. Yeah. We still connect with our alumni. So once 
I guess our um, young people have finished their scholarships and finished their education, they're off working. Yep. We still want to connect with them because we think that they can be a powerful community for oh, each other. Of course, yeah. Um, they can support, but they can also advocate and bring them into the fold. And Definitely. So you kind of get to, you know, you meet some young recipients who are at the start of their educational journey and then you meet alumni who are five years post-graduation and are just kicking goals. Yep. And it's just this great sense of, um, you know, how fantastic is that we sort of played this small part in that person's journey. It's really yeah, satisfying. Yeah, and, and for the new people, they can see where they can go. It's possible. Definitely. It makes it possible. Definitely. Breaking, um, breaking down that mental barrier of the... Absolutely. Yeah. So I see on your on web, on your website, uh, westernchances.org.au, there's a donate button. Yes. Is that uh, something you want people to come and give you, like help donate money and, and support your programs? We would love we would love for people to support our programs. And I think um, I think the one commitment we make to our donors is that um, you know, all your support goes into scholarships for young people. So we run a very lean organization. Andy, I think you're you know, you're podcasting today with I think 30 20 percent of the organization. So we we're a very small team. Um, <laughs> But, so you can be assured, and we do that. You know, we keep the team. We we keep pretty lean so that we can put our um, our money into the scholarships. So yeah, um, yeah. If you'd like to support, know that it really your, your funds will really go into empowering young people in Melbourne's West. Yeah, yeah which um, and like we've seen again on the testimonials, those people end up doing some really great things, um, and they are so grateful. And they really want to give back at the end, which is the exact kind of people that you want to create, isn't it? Like that, that you want to foster that. Yeah, they do. And you read in scholarship applications all the time. Oh, I volunteer to do this. I um, I lead a you know a homework group and support other young people mm. with their studies. I'm fundraising for another. I, I always laugh when these young people are fundraising for community organisations in their area. Yeah, you know, so th- like. They would never think to ask for themselves, but they're happy to fundraise um, for someone else. It yep. just really shows you that, I guess, that um, community are looking after each other. So, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic to read. Yeah, it is good. And if you've got any more, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to the next big fundraiser because that was a great day out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you got any more big ones coming up? We do. So we've got the Good Business Forum, um, which is our big event for the year um, where we sort of have about 400 leaders from you know community government um, and corporate organizations join us on the 27th of October to raise funds for our scholarship program so last year I think we raised $124,000 which you know that'll support uh, over 120 young people yeah scholarships scholarships, yeah Um, so this year we'd be aiming to do the same it's a fantastic day Um, we've got a great panel of speakers but more importantly we've got a great scholarship recipient who's going to share their story on the day, which for me is always a highlight oh, because yeah, you just get really to hear was. someone's story in their own words um, yep. about, you know, what the scholarship, how the scholarship sort of assisted them on their journey. Um, so, yeah, it's a fantastic day. Pencil it in the calendar. Yeah, there we go. All right. And ha- if people um, – can anyone go to that? Like are they going to be invitation only or is that something you can sign up to on um, the website? So, yes, so we're um, going to open uh, uh, ticketing shortly and, okay. yes, people can um, choose to come along if they'd like to on our website. So they go to your west, your website, westernchances.org.au, and they can find links towards that in the future, sometime they, in the future. Yeah. They can, yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Is there anything else big on the – like what, what else is big for you guys? Anything changing? Yeah, so it's interesting you ask at the moment where um, – I think coming out of COVID, we've sort of done a bit of a review of our strategy, as a lot of organisations have, I'm sure – um, and we're starting, we've always juggled with how do we connect young people with opportunities in the workplace. Um, so we're actually just about to launch an internship program where we connect our, you know, really talented, resilient tertiary scholarship recipients. So our young people who are, um, you know, studying degrees uh, with business uh, in a 12 week internship where they can, you know, get into the organization, get some work experience under their belt, start creating a network. Um, so that when they complete their degree, they come out and are re- really employable. But for our, um, you know, corporate organisations, and I speak to a, a number of um, corporate CEOs all the time, some of our partners talk about the talent shortage, um, you know, that people are looking for good people and they're trying yeah. to pipeline young, you know, talented young people. So it feels like a great way for us to sort of fit, facilitate these connections. Um, and we're looking forward to launching that program over the next uh, next month. Sure. And is that so if you're a corporate listening to this... Is that something you could get in touch with and get involved? In? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, to host an intern. So we're looking to place interns in organisations all across Melbourne. Yep. Um, it's a cap commitment of 12 weeks where, you know, the young person, um, you know, we set them up with um, a support, 
an internship plan, connect them with a, a supervisor and a buddy. Yep. Uh, but it's a cap commitment. It only goes for 12, 12 weeks. But it gets you gives you a really great chance to, to support someone from a diverse local community yes. that's come from a background um, you know, that might have experienced b- uh, barriers um, to get them into your workforce, mm. uh, to have a look at them. But we also know, because they've come through our scholarship program, that they're talented, they're motivated, and they're resilient and, and potentially could be you know, great people for you. Yeah, um, I think they could be excellent people um for any organization because they're like again they've been given a chance mm. and these people look like they're really grab you know grabbing onto it yeah absolutely so that that's one really exciting thing uh for us and and really that's been driven by a lot of our we a young people the feedback we're getting from our young people you know i went to a jobs victoria forum the end of last year and they said that the number of graduate level jobs in the last 10 years has shrunk by 90% um, you know, so so these young, it's even though you're finishing a degree, it's still quite hard to get into the workforce. And in Melbourne's West, youth unemployment is still staggeringly high, over 15%. Yeah, right. So it's not easy. And this way we think that we can sort of um, connect our young people with workplaces in, in a way that is beneficial to both. Yeah, and two, like, you know, they can have a, they can try it out and get some experience. But also, like, it's it's almost like a pipeline if they can, they can, um grab these people and they can all experience that workplace and then they can form long-term, you know, they may end up working there, you know, yeah. as their... Well, as an example, we, um, we've we worked with the Melbourne Airport for a long period of time. They've been our major corporate partner for many years, yep. um, a fantastic supporter, and they support our scholarship program, but we've got a young fella who really, really um, had some really challenging circumstances in his high school years and particularly with um, a family member's illness. Um, so we're supporting with a scholarship program, and his dream was always to be in aviation. Um, right. And you were talking earlier about you know you did the pilot had a dream of aviation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he wanted to you know wanted to become a pilot, and um, life's journey took him in a few different directions. But we connected him with Melbourne Airport, and he's now working. So they supported him as a scholarship recipient. He's now working at Melbourne Airport in the aviation field, where he you know he loves being at the airport, loves being around it. Um, and he's been there a number of years and it's this full circle moment where, you know, he's, he's been supported by the community. He's now working in the community in a field that he loves, um, you know, for a partner that we love. So it's been, it's been a great, it's been a really great outcome. That's a real success story. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, um, Zach Lewis, CEO of Western Chances. I've really enjoyed our chat this morning. Um, you're a very busy man and it's good of you to donate 20% of your workforce. (laughs) (laughs) To come down and do the podcast today uh, with 100% of our workforce. <laughs> uh, but no, I've really enjoyed the chat and I, I really uh, like what you're doing. It's really inspirational. And I, I recommend everyone get on to westernchances.org.au and just check out um, what what they're doing because the people that you're producing or assisting to, I guess, produce themselves <laughs> uh, through this. Um, they're going to be real community leaders in the future. So, Absolutely. So thank you so much for coming on to the podcast, um, and I wish you all the best for these two great programs coming this year. Um, but otherwise, onward and upward, get back to work and uh, get those kids going. Thanks, Andy. Really appreciate it, mate. (laughs) No worries. This has been the Good People Podcast. My name is Andy. It's all brought to you by In Other Good News. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. That helps us so much. And uh, tell your friends. Tell your friends about the Good People Podcast because uh, the more good stories we can tell, the more good we can do. So, Zach, again, thanks for joining us on the show. And until next episode, we'll catch you next time. It's a tip of the cap, it's a pat on the back, it's a smile from ear to ear. They're the good people from round here.